In 1982, a newborn boy was abandoned at the door of a Los Angeles hospital. There was no note, no explanation, just an innocent child left to fend for himself. As you're about to see, it's going to take a miracle and the love of dedicated parents for this child to survive. He was born addicted to crack cocaine. The infant was going through severe withdrawal and would most likely suffer severe brain damage. Forsaken, weak, with no one to care for him, the obstacles this infant faced seemed insurmountable. Dr. Mitchell Goldstein is a staff neonatologist at Providence St. Joseph Hospital in Burbank, California. With these babies who have had cocaine exposure, the babies without the ability to really direct attention, without the ability to really focus on what is normal newborn function, are unable to really get attached to the mom and the father and really essentially experience what it is to be a newborn. To provide foster care for the infant, the Los Angeles County Child Welfare Agency contacted Isla and Dale Pauley, veteran foster parents. We wasn't concerned about having a drug addicted baby because we really didn't know what it involved. We went into it with our eyes open, with no reservations, no preconceived ideas. We just knew that this child needed a home. He was very sick and he needed someone to love him. The Pollys named the baby Dale Daniel, Dee Dee for short. Although they had no previous experience caring for drug addicted infants, what they lacked in professional expertise, they made up for in love. The first day and night that we had him, he cried continually. He flailed about. He was unable to relax. This cry of a drug addicted baby is so much different than a regular, normal baby. It's almost a piercing, urgent, frightening cry that they have. And it's because they're in pain. They're withdrawing from drugs. And so we tried to keep him calm. And rocking seemed to calm him. The Polly's first days with Dee Dee were filled with tension. In spite of their best efforts, Dee Dee was unable to develop any regular sleep patterns and was suffering from severe sleep deprivation. The prognosis at first with Dee Dee was be told so many times over and over, well, you're wasting your time. He's not going to really develop normally. He will have problems all of his life. But the Polly saw something special in Dee Dee that the doctors could not. When Dee Dee was two years old, Isla and Dale legally adopted their foster son. And we did not accept anyone's prognosis that he wasn't going to be totally normal the rest of his life. We knew that there was a real spark in him, so we tried to develop that. Slowly, painstakingly, little Dee Dee began to show signs of recovery. But for every step forward, there were two steps back. He loved school, he loved kindergarten, but he would inappropriately get up and walk around the room or twirl or decide that he was going to talk continually and disrupt the entire school. The teachers were not able to cope with it. When it was obvious that Dee Dee could not function in a normal school environment, the Pollys took on an even more difficult task. They chose to homeschool their son. I began to teach him and I realized He's learning very rapidly, but he was able to do his stimulating himself with the twirling and the rocking in between. But when he wasn't doing it, I was able to get through to him to teach him, and he retained it. My name is Dee Dee Polly. Welcome to Griffin Park Travel Town. As Dee Dee entered his middle school years, his ability to learn increased rapidly. Still under his parents' homeschool tutoring, Didi made a remarkable decision. He told his parents that he wanted to finish high school two years early. When he decided that he was going to double up on his courses, there were many times I said to my husband, he'll never make it. This is too much of a challenge. It's too hard of a job. He didn't listen to people when they said he was going to fail. And that's the way he's going to be going through his whole life. Day after day, hour after hour, Dee Dee poured over English, math, history, and science courses. With every step, his parents were by his side, encouraging him and praying for him. Dee Dee is very special, and he has high ideals. 
and he's expressed it to us and to other people too that he's going to really do something special. And we believe he is. I want to present this diploma to Dee Dee Polly, Dale Daniel Polly. In June of 1998, Dee Dee Polly proved to the world that he was capable of meeting the challenge. At age 16, he graduated from high school as valedictorian of his home school group. Next year, Dee Dee will be attending college. It's really rewarding to me as a teacher to see him tonight, to stand up there and give his speech. And I'm just very, very proud. I would like to thank my mother, Isla Polly, for providing me with the means to graduate from high school and for spending countless hours advising me and caring for my physical, spiritual, and financial needs. I love you, Mom. I would like to also thank my father, Dale Polly, for his timeless adages and advice and counsel wrought from over 50 years of experience and lots of hard work. I love you too, Dad. Congratulations to all the students and graduates. Thank you, and God bless you. A child has overcome the disadvantage, essentially, of drug addiction at birth and gone on to succeed despite this. The miracle here is that this child has done so well despite society. You really don't see this. This is truly unique. <laughs>